Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content. We're going to be featuring a G-Max Blastoise team. It is a Pokemon that's seen a bit more usage in the early stages of Series 9. And for good reason, you know, it can set up itself with Shell Smash and it's also got its signature G-Max Attack, G-Max Cannonade, which has that residual damage every turn for four turns after you use it, which really helps stack up at the damage on your opponent's side of the field and kind of keep that momentum on yours uh the supporting cast we've got grimmsnarl obviously a very kind of staple pokemon in series 9 at the minute with those screen support we've got scary face on there as well to allow a little bit speed control in the team and then you've got the nice fire water grass call with rillaboom helps out against pausing water types that blastoise sometimes struggles with and then the rotten heat which provides a good coverage with electric and fire and then you've got reggie steel another pokemon that's picking up a lot of usage recently and uh, for good reason as well you know you can carve out wind conditions pretty easily with registeel in the right environment the right support and cast which i'm hoping we've got in this team today uh we've got that iron defense and body press combination which is just incredible and then you stack up the grassy terrain recovery with the leftovers and it can stay on the field for a, a very long time and then kind of rounding off the team with landerous theory and with that assault fest which just gives us a bit of a better matchup against the, the those pesky kind of sun teams that we're seeing with torco venusaur at the moment especially if they haven't got a, a very good way to deal with Landorus early on in the game Landorus can become very good and the, the other thing about Blastoise is it has got access to fake out so it can be also kind of a supporting Pokemon as well as something that can be a big powerhouse for your side of the field hopefully you enjoy the team as always there is a poker paste down in the description below we'll have a couple of games of the team pilot it show you how it features and then we'll wrap up with a rental at the end of the episode so do stick around for that but before we get into today's episode I'd love to hear your comments leave them down below if you've been playing around with Reggie Steel, how you've been finding it in Series 9, and also Blastoise as well, two Pokemon that are appearing prominently on this team today and ones that i'm very interested in to know if you've been playing and how you've been getting on with them and how you kind of see their usage stats going for the rest of the series nine so do leave them down below i love hearing your comments about these uh these different pokemon and archetype in the format especially these early stages as well but without further ado friends we'll jump into our first game of today's episode okay up first we have a rillaboom dusclops incineral blastoise indeedy and glastria team so uh, would you imagine Imagine you've got the the Blastoise mirror up first um, and they've got redirection whereas we haven't but the, we've got screen support and they haven't so kind of similar teams similar concepts obviously they've got a harder trick room switch uh, to their teams so that kind of plays into Registeel and kind of being able to come in and do some work late game especially against that Glastria if we do see it uh, the redirection with the Indeedy going to help out their big kind of hit as obviously in the Glastria and the Blastoise and help them set up their trick room but outside of that they don't have much speed control really they got priority on the on the rillaboom and they may have shell smash on the blast toys so they're things that we do need to watch out for i do feel like screen support here is going to be really pivotal for us it just helps us slow down my opponent's kind of momentum and and, and prevent that damage output from being too ridiculous now we've got to be careful around the glass of course and we've got to be careful around the blast toys whether or not we actually bring Rillaboom as a lead here could be an option with Blastoise because it does give us the option to potentially change the terrain. Although we might be better at bringing Rillaboom in to get rid of the, the Psychic terrain and utilize it against the Blastoise. We've still got to be very careful around that Blastoise with the... Um, it will have Max Hailstorm as an attack, so it can really do some good damage to the Rillaboom, and obviously the Incineroar can do some work around that as well. And we've also got to be conscious about the opposing Rillaboom on my opponent's side of the field. It can be a bit of an issue for us to deal with, but if we can get Reggie Steel, I think, in an endgame position with those Iron Defenses up, it can probably win us win it out for us uh obviously we've got to be very careful around a lot of things on my opponent's team that can get a little bit out of control namely that glass tray as well start stacking up those chilling near boosts um later on in this game it can become a little bit tr tricky okay well we got indeedy we got blastoise out for my opponent so we can get our screens up turn one and what we could potentially do as well mm, we probably can't because i think the problem with the Psychic Terrain up, it really limits what Grimmsnarl is able to do. I was going to talk about Scary Face there, but the Psychic Terrain really limits our ability to, to be able to kind of utilize that. One thing we could do is Shell Smash here, which is quite a nice option. Um, we can throw up a light screen as well. Because I don't really see my opponent having a way to knock Blastoise out 
uh, this turn. Uh, we are going to see the Blastoise of my opponents then just go straight for that Gigantamax. And the nice thing about our Blastoise on the field is that, you know, we're not subjected to the residual damage as long as Blastoise on our side sticks around. So let's see how we get on here. Are we being greedy by going for the Shell Smash turn one? Maybe, maybe, maybe. As we see a helping hand come out from the Ndidi. We do get a light screen up, which will help mitigate that helping hand a little bit. Um, and Gmax Cannonade coming out before. Uh, is it into the Grim Snarl? Go on, be into the Grim Snarl. Yeah, that's good. That's what we like to see. That's what we like to see. Um, so we're going to get a Shell Smash up for free, which is amazing. And got a light screen up as well. we we'll proc that White Herb. So we're sitting in a decent ish position going into turn two. Where we can go after the the Indeedee. Uh the cannonade not going to be quite enough for the residual damage to get rid of the Grim Snarl this turn, um, and we've got an extra turn of Gigantamax if we go for it here. Um, let's just take a quick look because I think we've also got to keep in mind that the Rillaboom is probably in the back, uh, so we're going to have to be a little bit aware of that when it does hit the field. We'll go for the cannonade into Indeedee here. Uh, and we'll get a Reflect up, which will help us against the opposing Rillaboom when it does eventually come onto the field, which we know it definitely will. But I'm not too worried about the opposing Blastoise against ours at the moment. You know, we're sitting plus two uh, with that nice speed boost as well. So, and their damage output's not going to be that great, especially behind the light screen. And without the residual damage kind of affecting our own Blastoise, we're, we're not in a bad spot. So... We'll see what this Indeedy goes for. It may go for an Expanding Force here, as we do get our Reflect up with Grim Snarl, which is kind of just more for late game. So we do get the Cannonade off. Is it going to be enough, though, to get the Indeedy? Yes, it takes it down to a Sash. Okay, which is fine. And that Sash will be gone after this turn anyway. They're going for an Expanding Force. So they go for another Cannonade. Is it going to be into Grim Snarl, though, this time, or what? No, going after the Blastoise. So Grim's not going to be able to stick around for at least another turn, which is always useful. And Blastoise is going to be able to eat that expanding force up pretty, pretty easily. And I think my opponent at this point probably just wants a damage onto our, onto our Blastoise for when the Rillaboom hits the field, and knowing that the uh, the residual damage is going to be enough to take down our Grim Snarl here. So it really comes down to who's. Rillaboom is going to be faster and can utilize that fake out first. Um, but we do have the light screen. Now. We're not going to see the Rillaboom just yet, which is interesting. So maybe they're going for more of a trick room route. Um, we've got the option here where we could potentially go knock off and attack into the Dusclops. Remove the trick room option completely. We've got the light screen as well, which should mean we can take an attack from from the Blastoise. The Max Hailstorm, we should be able to take that. I'm going to go for the Cannonade, and I'm going to go for a knockoff into the Dusclops here. You know, the knockoff's going to go after, but it should still be enough. You just got to hope that the residual damage and on top of the, the Max Hailstorm isn't enough to uh, to get to get the, the Rillaboom in one hit here. Yeah, we're going to be able to take it. At least stick around to get a Grassy Glide off this next turn, which is the big thing for us, I think. Um, and we still got one turn. Yeah, if we can get rid of the Dusclops here, yeah, that's huge for us. Yep, bop. And then, yeah, one more turn where we get a Grassy Glide into that Blastoise. Not maxed at all. And we still got room for our Blastoise to kind of clean this one up. Depend on what comes in. I would imagine the Glastria almost now, but I'm surprised my opponent hasn't brought their Rillaboom. Knowing that you can kind of see from our team that, you know, the, the Blastoises are kind of main Pokemon. Or going to be, like, pretty much our main max Pokemon. Although we do have the Registeel, I guess. You could have maybe thought more along those lines. But still, bringing the, the Rillaboom, I think, to this matchup just makes more sense. But it might be. No, it is the Glastria. Okay. Okay, so I think here we just go... G-Max Cannonade into the Glastria and go for a Grassy Glide into the Blastoise. So it's pretty 
easy clicking buttons for us here and it just i think it warrants the 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 play where we try and just get rid of the dust clops that last turn just prevent that trick room where we we had the opportunity to because it could get pretty difficult after that but uh, very good game to my opponent and uh, blastoise with that shell smash turn one doing some big work here and uh, making sure that we can pick up the win against our first opponent today which is always nice to see when you uh, feature a new pokemon and a new team on the channel so with that friends we'll jump straight into our next game of the episode okay next up we have in arcozolt uh inteleon talonflame urshifu bronzong and reggie rock i'm late getting this up because I didn't know if that was Octavish or Octazolt and it is Octazolt of course it is um so what are we looking at here you got Tailwind from the Talonflame instant with that Gale Wings ability gonna be a little bit of an issue to deal with of course and then you got Trick Room from the uh, the Bronzong gonna be the thing that allows the Reggie Rock to kind of set up uh Octazolt gonna be a little bit awkward for us to deal with of course because um Blastoise isn't gonna enjoy being in front of that Pokemon at all, like one little bit. Uh, but we do have Rotom that we can possibly use. I think screen support is going to be quite big for us here. Um, Rillaboom as well going to be useful, although not against the Talonflame too much. I don't know if we're going to bring Blastoise to this game, to be honest. I think Rillaboom and then Registeel are probably going to be our Pokemon to kind of utilize in this one, especially because we've not got long left. But you can look at the options on my opponent's team and kind of surmise what they're kind of going for, probably an early Tailwind game with the Alcazult and then a late kind of trick room game with the uh, the Reggie Rock if they want to go down that route of course but um, hopefully it's as an entertaining game as that first one was that first one was a nice one for us to kick off with uh, but obviously it's nice to see these kind of not so used Pokemon as well Alcazult not something that you, you kind of tend to see that often uh, but brought them in a decent spot here now is Alcazult more special or physical that's the big question. I would have said it's more... Uh, no, it's probably the electric type, so it's probably more physical, right? Let's go for a reflect, just to make sure. And let's go for a nasty plot while we've got the opportunity. I feel like we're in a good spot with uh, Rotom Heat here to get that off. Um, but, you know, Alcazult's not one of those Pokemon. I'm, like, I have to admit, I have to hold my hands up. I'm not really too familiar with what it is capable of doing, what it generally runs not really come into many of them when I've been playing on the ladder at all either on showdown or on here um so it'll be interesting to see what it does and I hope I don't get caught with my pants down that's the proverbial you know um so we'll see we'll see it'll be interesting to see what happens tailwind's pretty obvious from the talent flame and um Elkazol, we're gonna see all right reflect going up I'm as interested as you are, friends. So, Max Hailstorm coming out. Okay, it's definitely s physical, I would say, because Grim's not taking that pretty comfortably there from a max move, as we are going to be able to get a good old nasty plot off. And being an ice and electric type um, gives us a bit of an advantage where we can go for that max Hailstorm the next turn, uh, the max uh, flare the next turn uh, into the Arcozol. And Probably, or uh, do we go for a scary face as well? Just take away the tailwind from my opponent and try and nuke it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just go for scary face. Max Flare, and let's uh, start the Rotom train. And I guess it's good, you know, like, you know, when you, you want to be kind of featuring a team, you want to you wanna be able to always feature. I say this a lot on the channel, you know, we, we have games where... You know, you can't always, you have that like main kind of Pokemon, like we've got Blastoise today, it is the Pokemon, the centerpiece Pokemon of the team. We've had a great first game where we got to see it, but sometimes you can't always bring a certain Pokemon to a certain matchup. So it is nice to be able to see the other Pokemon be able to perform in situations where, you know, Blastoise has to sit out, but the, the other Pokemon are there for us, just as good a reason, and they can come in, and it's nice to be able to kind of showcase that from, from time and time again. So let's see how well Rotom can do here, and it'd be nice to see the Registeel be able to kind of get some uh, get some limelight today as well. Um, that all goes out though, I feel so bad for it, it looks so cold. <laughs> It's just like shaking, poor drip. It was the first fossil I think I got in uh, Sword and Shield. Did you see another hailstone come out um, on my copy of Shield? Uh, it was the first one. Wow, it's into the rotten. Really, really desperate times for this uh, for this arc result here. Uh, unfortunately, will it drop? It will. Okay, and we get rid of the hailstorm as well, which is nice. Preserve Grimmsnarl as well for maybe later on in this game if we need to. Um, 
<clears throat> so we're sitting in a decent spot with the team. It obviously all comes down to what my opponent's got in the back. They've still got the tailwind in effect. Uh, and Grim's now taunted now, so we're not going to be able to utilize that going into the next turn. So, yeah, Urshifu coming in makes things a bit tricky. It makes me want to keep Grimmsnarl for later on in this match, in all honesty. Um, is Reggie Steel going to be like the better Pokemon to bring in here? Because, mm, yeah, probably. I think Rillaboom is quite important. Once we can get rid of the Talonflame here, I think Rillaboom can can help us out a bunch, especially with its grassy terrain, grassy glides, can just start helping us chip things like uh, the Urshifu. But as long as that Talon Flame's around, it's going to be very difficult to kind of deal with. As we see a Flare Blitz come out, are they doubling up into the Rotom here? Give us a free switch in to, um, yeah, Reggie Steel. And it, oh, is that a band? It might be a band, you know, on that uh, Urshifu. Okay, well, yeah, taking a lot of damage on the Rotom here. You'd imagine it is banned as well. It makes sense if you're you're guaranteed most of the time to get your trick room up when you want it. So, not massively necessary to have the sash, and the sash probably would serve you better maybe on something like the talent flame where you can always get that tailwind up if you need to. You know. Well, we're up in number at the minute, but it's not going to be that easy to close this one out for sure uh and Teleon coming in especially under a tailwind but really boom kind of can can close this one out for us pretty well so i think what we'll do is we'll go for a body press into urshifu um could max guard here but i think it's probably better if we just allow rotom to go down and we'll just go for a max lightning into the urshifu in hope maybe we'll get something but i don't think we will yeah uh, so that's going to take us down there, and then we're going to take a Wicked Blow to Registeel, which we'll be able to take. You know, the defense there is pretty good, and uh, the critical hit going to make it pretty nasty. But then we do have Grimmsnarl that can uh, can potentially come in and do some something. Ah, uh, we take that so well. So well with Registeel. Body Press, uh, it's going to do decent damage, but I don't... Oh, wow. Oh, didn't expect it to... Uh... Oh, okay. Critical hit. That makes things a lot easier. It's like seeing that the bar just go. Well, that just that that just ties the game up for us there. I think I was hoping really at that point that we get Urshifu into range of a grassy glide or at least a fake out and another body press to come in because you've got to think the snipe shot from the Inteleon is weakened because of the sun. So I think a fake out body press the next turn, especially if it is banded, uh, would be enough to then just get the grassy glide the following turn after that onto it but now it just makes it very easy for us just to click the uh, body press grassy glide and we'll probably see a forfeit from my opponent but at least we got to see reggie steel come in and do some work not a great deal of work of course it does a lot more than that at, uh, when it gets a body press set up and uh, can really do uh, some very nice work against opposing teams if in the right conditions but uh, the team doing pretty well there rotten heat big star of the show on that one a uh, very good game to my opponent as always and we'll jump over now and we'll get you guys the rental team for today's squad okay friends here is the rental code for today's team as you can see it is all centered around that blast toys and they uh, got some nice support and Pokemon there especially with that Reggie Steel so if you do try the team out as always please let me know down in the comment section how you got on with it or if it just inspired some ideas for your own builds because um, that's what it's all about you know taking ideas and building on them and putting them together for your own team and uh, hopefully if you haven't tried these Pokemon out it already in the format it gives you the opportunity to kind of utilize them in this team and give them a go and try some of these combinations out because i think they're very strong in this current format and especially you know that firewater grass core that you've got with the rillaboom rotom and blastoise can be picked up and put into a lot of different variations and uh, the same can be said with reggie steel as well and obviously grim is just one of the biggest staples in this format at the minute but it's got a nice deep move pool it's got some nice options there so you can utilize it in kind of a lot of different ways obviously you can you go down a, a fake tier route a thunder wave route it's got plenty of options trick even is something that you don't see too often but can see and sucker punch is definitely a move option on there that i think could be utilized a lot better in this format than we, we're probably seeing it being utilized at the moment anyway thank you so much as always for tuning in i've had a lot of fun in today's episode the games have been really good so i hope you've enjoyed them as well we'll wrap up there have a great rest of your day more importantly than anything else take care of yourselves and i'll see you all for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye